All right. So um, yeah, for me also the the movement of the workshop was not in the direction of changing my mind about things, but certainly in the direction of sharpening uh, ideas I had about things very much in a very important way. Um, one of the pre-existing ideas I had coming in was that it's always fun to bring smart and interesting people into the same room and good things happen that you don't predict and that was absolutely verified so thanks everyone for participating in that. Um, I guess the other, the major idea about naturalism and sort of the idea I have about naturalism moving forward qua naturalism itself rather than all the disciplinary interests is the idea that there is one world, the natural world, but there are many ways of talking about that natural world. And it's understanding the many ways of talking about it and how they fit together and are verified and are useful or rejected that is the important part of the program. So uh, I, I can't resist uh, mentioning one of the papers that was foundational for my understanding of thinking about layers and emergence and things like that. It was by Sidney Coleman, who taught Jana and me quantum field theory many years ago. In 1975, he wrote a paper called Quantum Sine Gordon Equation as the Massive Turing Model. Anyone else have this as their favorite paper? No? <laughs> uh, so uh, it's about, he, found, he finds a model theory in one dimension of space, one dimension of time, and it's actually two theories. There's a theory called the Quantum Sine Gordon Equation, which is just a, a terrible, terrible term that he used as a joke and then caught on. We have a, a, a boson, since we're going back to bosons and fermions. There's a boson and a particular potential, and the potential is just a sine wave. It goes up and down. And there's a whole nother theory, which is a theory of fermions, also in one spatial dimension, where these fermions can bump into each other and interact. And what Coleman shows, in the, and the utterly independently written theories, one theory of bosons, one theory of fermions. And Coleman proves mathematically that they're secretly the same exact theory. That in this boson theory, you not only have little oscillations in the potential, which look like bosons, but you also have big variations, which go from one minimum to another, and they act like fermions. And you crank up the coupling constant, and you show that every thing that you can calculate in one theory is exactly the same as you would get from doing it in the other theory. So here is one reality with two very, very different ontologies that are equivalent in every possible way. So uh, that liberated my thinking about the right way to think about reality uh, in that it made me think that different ways of talking about the same underlying reality are just as good. And I would say that's even true if they're not equivalent, if like thermodynamics is a subset of the domain of applicability of the atomic theory that underlies it. But nevertheless, my own personal view would be that the concepts of thermodynamics are equally real and equally part of how to talk about things. Um, and so I would say the same thing about whatever it is we call uh, volition or free will. I'm kind of getting sympathetic to the idea that free will has too many barnacles. I think that's an interesting idea. But nevertheless, so even if you buy all that, of the ways that we have of talking about the natural world, there are two different species. There are the sort of descriptive vocabularies and there are the normative vocabularies. And I think they're both important, but I think that the ways that we have of talking about them and validating them are very different. And that's something we didn't quite get into talking about at a very specific level. But I think that both the parallelism is important and the differences are important. I think that when we decide what is moral, what is right, or uh, what is aesthetically beautiful, or what is um, artistic. Uh, these are all vocabularies for talking about the world, but in those normative spheres, we don't have recourse to the simple and, and consensus scientific apparatus that we have for the descriptive ones. So we have contention, and I think that actually I was surprised that there seemed to be so much potential common ground when we were talking about morality that we all have impulses in us, and we're all gonna have to use some communicative uh, process to work out how to develop that into a theory of morality. So uh, one conclusion of the workshop for me is that I'm even more optimistic about naturalism than I was before. And I would even say that not only uh, academically, but also publicly. I think that, you know, um, I see a way forward to making this uh, a compelling story to tell people. I don't think that we have the vocabulary and the rhetoric to do it yet. I don't think we have the social uh, aspects that we all agree are important. Um, but I see no obstacles in the way to do that. And you know, 100 years from now, when, that's, uh, when everyone is a naturalist, they will look back and go, yes, there was that moment 
uh, in Stockbridge when it all uh, got off the ground. <laughs>